Hello, this is McD the Beast, and this is McD Sports 4 coming to you today with my college football top 25 for week 6 of the 2022 college football season. Before I continue, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe to your channel. We really appreciate you do that. We're really trying to go to the channel, so go ahead and do that. So week six, 5 is in the books. This is my college football top 25 for week 6 here. Um, a few quick notes before I get started. Um, week 5 overall uh, was a pretty good week. Um, a few surprising results. A few, as you get, as you get in every college football week, um, a few results I expected. Um, you also had a lot of moving in the polls this week. Uh, we did kick out four teams this week in the poll, so we have four new members of the poll. And one other quick note, not related to college football. Um, if you hear a some water possibly running. Um, I apologize for that. Uh, we're getting the what's ever left over of the Hurricane Ida um, here today in Maryland, and it's been raining all morning downpour. So, um, sorry if you hear some rain coming down. Um, it's just it, what it is, what it is. But anyways, let's get into it. My top 25 for week six. We'll kick it off with number 25, Florida State. I kept Florida State in the top 25. I was disappointed that they lost to Wake Forest 31-21. We'll talk about Wake Forest here in a second. But I kept them in the top 25 because I still think that win against LSU is pretty, is pretty impressive. Um, LSU's 4-1. They're a team that is probably a top 35 team. Um, they get We'll see what they do against Tennessee next week. But um, I just, I kept them in there. They, I dropped them six spots. I was disappointed that they lost, but I was. I still think their resume is pretty good. Um, they went ahead. They do have three wins against Power Five schools. Um, so I, I kept Florida State in the top twenty-five and number twenty-five. Number twenty-four, James Madison. Um, this is very. This was very close between James Madison and Coastal Carolina for the for the uh, group of five team that I, I was going to pit in. Both of those teams are undefeated. I went with James Madison, JMU, because I think the wins are better. Uh, they do have wins against Appalachian State and Middle Tennessee State, who has wins against Texas A&M and Miami, respectfully. Um, and Coastal Carolina has some good wins as well, but I just think JMU's wins are better. So I picked JMU. Uh, in the top 25. This might be the first time they've ever been in a top 25 since this is their first year in FBS play. Um, so number 24, JMU, welcome to the top 25. Number 23, Texas. I moved you guys up two spots. Pretty impressive win against West Virginia. I didn't like how you guys closed out that game. It was 35-7. The final was 38-20. Um, and West Virginia is a team that I think is probably one of, if not the worst team in the Big 12. But it's a good win for Texas. They needed this win before the Red River shootout. Um, so, good win for Texas. I moved you guys up two spots to number 23. Number 22 is UCLA. Listen, you're 5-0. You got a really impressive win against a Washington team that was number 18 in my pool this past week. Um, this final score was 40-32. It was 40-16 to hanging to the third quarter. Um, I was pretty impressed with UCLA. Um, and listen, they are going to be moving to the Big Ten. I know the California Board of uh, Colleges, whatever that board is, is trying to stop it. The Pac-12 is going to be is going to become the Pac-0 because there's rumors that the Big 12 is going to offer Colorado, Utah, and the Arizona schools a spot in the Big 12. Um, and I mean, it looks like or uh, at the minimum, Oregon, Washington is going to be going to the Big Ten as well. It looks like. Uh, more likely or not, it hasn't been announced, but I think that's what's gonna happen. So the Pac-12 is gonna it's gonna be extinct here in a few years. So UCLA, um, this is good for them because they're gonna be in, in the Big Ten and they're going to uh, need to probably do a few things um, because UCLA is more of a basketball school than a football school, and um, I do think they have the right head coach in Chip Kelly. And I think that overall, um, they are going. To, they're not going to be the title contenders once they hit the Big Ten. So it's they need to show recruits now that they can win, and this is a, a, a big win for them against Washington. So number twenty-two UCLA, welcome to the top twenty-five. Number twenty-one BYU, uh, you beat Utah State. Um, 
Now, as people are saying Utah State is kind of a bad team, they did win the Mountain West last year. So I'll give BYU a little bit of a pass. I think they did end up pulling away and winning the game by two touchdowns, 38-24. So I moved BYU up one spot. Um, not really impressed with that win, but BYU, they still have um, Arkansas on their schedule. I know that. Um, and they still have a few other good opponents on their schedule, I believe. So we'll see what BYU does, number 21, BYU. Now the top 20, number 20, Syracuse. You beat Ragnar. Okay, I mean, you moved up one spot. Syracuse, still a pretty good team. They're, I believe they are undefeated still. So number 20, Syracuse. Number 19, Minnesota. Oh, Minnesota made me look so dumb y yesterday. Um, They lost to Purdue 20-10. to 10. Now, Purdue's a team that I think could beat anybody any given Saturday. Um. It so happens to be they're facing Minnesota and went on the road and beat them. I still think Minnesota is a top 25 team. I still think they are the best team in the Big Ten West. Um, they have that tough game against Penn State, but outside of that, they should be favored in the rest of their games. I moved them down eight spots to number 19, number 19, Minnesota. Number 18, TCU. What an impressive win for TCU. 55-24 was the final score against Oklahoma. Um, that offense did whatever they wanted against that defense for uh, Oklahoma. People are going to be like, oh, Oklahoma's quarterback, Dylan Gabriel, got injured. Guys, the score is 34-10 when he got injured in TCU's favor, so don't give me that. Uh, TCU, um, they are a top 25 team. They are. Um, they have a big game against Kansas this week. We'll see what happens in that one. Um, that, that's actually the, uh. They're on the road against Kansas. That's actually where game day is going, college game day is going. So that's going to be interesting. Um, but number 18, TCU, um, I I was really impressed. And I didn't think they were going to win that game. I, they did surprise me some. So number 18, TCU. Number 17, Kansas. Speaking about Kansas, um, I have to pick Kansas in the top 25. Um I, know, I kind of was holding off a little bit because I did think that Iowa State was going to go in there and beat them and bring everybody back to reality. But to Kansas won the game 14-11. to 11. I did not expect Kansas to win that game for, if they were going to win it 14-11. to 11. I thought if Kansas was going to win that game, it would be a shootout. Their defense took strides uh, throughout this game. They have, As I said, they have a big game against TCU at home. Um, college game day is going to be there. I believe the game is on FS1. But this is a top 25 game right here between Kansas and TCU. Um, but if you look at Kansas, if you look at their resume, they have one FCS win, but the rest of the wins. Duke, who won uh, this past Saturday against uh, Virginia, very impressive win for them. They went ahead. They beat West Virginia. Uh, they went on the road and beat them. That's a hostile environment there. Uh, they beat Houston. Houston's a pretty talented team. They beat TC, they, not TCU. They beat Iowa State. Um, who has a great, great head coach, Matt Campbell. So I am uh, very – if you look at Kansas' schedule and their resume, it's legit. So the 17 Kansas, um, they look like the uh, surprise team of the year. They really do. If they beat TCU, uh, watch out. So number 17 Kansas, I, as I said, um, I'm really impressed with them. I really am. I, 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 so – Number 17, Kansas. Welcome to the top 25. Number 16, Wake Forest. I was really impressed with Wake Forest going on the road and beating Florida State like that. 31-21 was the final. I moved Wake Forest up seven spots. Um, if you look at Wake Forest's schedule, I mean, I, you guys already played Clemson and you lost to them. Um, you guys could win out. You guys could really win out. You still have Syracuse on the schedule, but... Um, I was very really impressed with Wake Forest going on the road and finding a way to beat uh, Florida State. Oh, yeah, you also have NC State on schedule. But the ACC is looking good this year. It is looking good this year. So number 16, Wake Forest. Number 15, now the top 15, Penn State. Ugly win against Penn, uh, against a bad Northwestern team, in my opinion, um, for Penn State. I moved you guys up one spot kind of by default. But um, I still think Penn State is a very, is a very good team. Um, they're kind of at a part of their schedule right now that's kind of like a struggle spot. They have Michigan in, I think, two weeks, so that's going to be a huge game. So we'll see what happens there. But number 15, Penn State. Number 14, NC State. I didn't punish NC State that much. Um, 
you look at NC State, um, they lost 30-20 to to Clemson. I'll admit I did not watch the last, like, four minutes of this game because I fell asleep. Um, and I haven't watched the highlights uh, since then. I, I don't know if um, Clemson scored a touchdown to get to 30-13 uh, to or what happened there. But NC State, I mean, Clemson's a better team. It, it, it was blatantly obvious throughout the game. Uh, but you look at um, NC State, though. They still, I still think their expectations, they can still reach the expectations, make it a New Year's Six Bowl game um, and, and go from there. But they have, as I said, they still get Syracuse. They still get um, Florida State. They still get uh, Wake Forest on the schedule. So, I mean, they're going to have some games uh, to prove themselves. Clemson might slip up a time or two. We'll see. Uh, we will see, but NC State, um, I only dropped them two spots. I wasn't, I didn't really think they hurt themselves that much. So number 14, NC State. Number 13, Oregon. I moved Oregon up two spots. I know you'd be an Arizona State team that's not good and they don't, and they have an interim head coach, but you did uh, get the mission accomplished, basically. So I moved Oregon up two spots to number 13. Number 12, Baylor. I was disappointed in Baylor, not so much because they lost, but in the fashion they lost. Oklahoma State controlled that game from start to finish. I know Baylor got it a little bit interesting when it got to 33-25, but I thought Oklahoma State clearly looked like the better team. Uh, Baylor, um, in my opinion, is still a top 15-ish team. I could have probably moved Baylor down a little bit more, but I did take into consideration it was a top 10 matchup. Uh, so I only moved Baylor down five spots. But Baylor, number 12. Um, the Big 12, I still think, is wide open. So they they still can end up in the Big 12 championship game. And um, Because remember, Oklahoma State beat Baylor in the regular season. And then Baylor turned around and beat Oklahoma State in the Big 12 championship game. So we'll see what happens. But number 12, Baylor. Number 11, Kentucky. Um, if Kentucky and Ole Miss played each other 100 times, Kentucky will win 50 of them, and Ole Miss will win 50 of them. I'm not going to punish Kentucky that much. I am going to move them out of the top 10, but I still think Kentucky, their goals are right in front of them. Um, outside of Georgia, who else is, is Kentucky is uh, Kentucky going to be an underdog to? Tennessee, probably. So, I mean, I still think Kentucky has their goals in front of them. Um, and Kentucky could, should have easily won this game. They didn't turn over the ball several times in key, uh, in key uh, situations. Kentucky, I think, would have won this game. So I moved Kentucky down two spots, but it's, they're number 11 in the McD Sports 4 pool. But um, I'm not really um, going to sit there and worry if I'm Kentucky. Now the top 10, number 10 Ole Miss. Ole Miss, I got to give them credit. They won a top 15 game. Um, Ole Miss was number 14 in the poll last week. They moved up to number 10. They they won a game, that, in my opinion, that um, at home in front of that crowd. That I thought that, as I said, I think a 50-50 game in front of that home crowd, you're able to get a few key turnovers and get the win. So Ole Miss, I have to put you guys above Kentucky um, because of the head-to-head. -head. So number 10, Ole Miss. Number nine, Utah. Very impressive win at home against Oregon State. Oregon State team, I still think, is going to win seven, eight games. So, but 42 16 was the final there. Just a very impressive win there for Utah. I moved them up uh, four spots to uh, number nine. Number eight, Tennessee. I know Tennessee had by. I know I moved them down two spots. I, it's basically what I've seen through, through the first five weeks. Tennessee, I think, at worst, is a top-10 team. Um, I did move them down two spots only because um, I was impressed with uh, two teams ahead of them. And um, I still have number seven. I still think USC will beat Tennessee on neutral field. So um, Tennessee, number eight. Um, they have a big game against LSU this week on the road before the Bama game. We'll see what happens. USC number seven. Um, you guys did beat. Uh, go ahead and beat. Um, I forgot who you guys beat. I think you guys beat. Oh, I I misspoke earlier. USC beat Arizona State and uh, Oregon beat Stanford. So I misspoke earlier. Um, USC beat Arizona State in convincing fashion. 
The Oregon State losing to Utah kind of hurts USC a little bit, in my opinion. So that's why I moved. That's why you got moved down. We're going to be moved down at least a spot, but I moved you guys down two spots because the two teams ahead of USC at five and six, I was very impressed with. But um, I still think USC is a top ten team. And um, as I'm, I'm sorry for misspeaking earlier. Um, Oregon beat Stanford in convincing fashion, so I misspoke there earlier. Sorry about that. Um. But anyways, USC, up for seven. Um, I think, as I said, I think USC, everything's in front of them. They do have UCLA on the schedule, uh, Utah in a few weeks. So they do have a few tough games. Maybe they'll draw Oregon or Washington out of the uh, Pac-12 championship game. So number seven, USC. Number six, Oklahoma State. I was really impressed with Oklahoma State. I was really impressed um, with them. They could be in college football playoffs uh, when it's all said and done. Oklahoma State, I moved them up four spots to number six. Um, the only thing that worries me is that Mike Gundy always seems to lose a game he's not supposed to lose every year, and that could derail the whole season. Um, last year, they kind of lost a game that they're not supposed to lose on a bad spot against Iowa State. Um, and I'll continue saying it. Oklahoma State was a yard and a bad spot away from being in the playoffs. So they, they're they right there, in my opinion. I was really impressed with Oklahoma State. They controlled this game from start to finish against Baylor. So number six, Oklahoma State. Now the top five, number five, Clemson. Yeah, I'm finally there with Clemson. Um, I was impressed against NC State, I have to admit. 30-20 um, to 20 was the final score. I moved Clemson up three spots. I just had, I, I'll admit, I know I was kind of low on Clemson. I just need them to show me that um, they were they were back into uh, playoff contention. And yesterday, yesterday's game did. Um, they still have uh, Florida State and Syracuse on the schedule. Um, so we'll see what happens in those two games. They also have Notre Dame as well. That's not going to be able to give me there up there in South Bend, in my opinion. But. Clemson, they look like the best team in the ACC. They do, in my opinion. Number five, Clemson. Number four, Michigan. Uh, Michigan, very impressive win on the road against Iowa. Um, and I'll be honest with you, Iowa is offensively actually performing a lot better than what I thought they were going to. Now, granted, I said the score is going to be twenty-three to ten. I narrowed the as uh, the point spread margin. I said Michigan by thirteen. I was right about that. Each team just scored four more points. So uh, I feel I, I felt pretty good about that. That the game basically played out exactly how I thought it would. Um, but Michigan, they have a game against Indiana that, that they should win. Indiana had a very disappointing loss to Nebraska, in my opinion. I picked Indiana as one of their upsets because I thought, well, at least they still have a, a culture and Tom Allen. I think at least. Is still worth something, but apparently not. Um, that was a bad pick on my end. But Michigan, number four, I didn't move them. Um, until they lose or until they prove me differently, they're probably going to stay at the number four spot. Number three, Georgia. I had moved Georgia from the number one spot after this past Saturday. Listen, there's one thing to sleepwalk against a Kent State, and I gave Georgia kind of a pass on that. You slept walk against a Missouri. Like, really? Um, and listen, give Missouri credit. It looks like they damn near sold out the place, and they got a good game. Um, and to be honest, that might have saved Eli Drinkwich's uh, job there for this year in case they, if they continue to struggle. But um, let me tell you something. Um, Georgia was down 22-12 to 12 at one point in the fourth quarter and had to come back and win the game. Um, this was not a good performance by Georgia at all, in my opinion. Uh, you still have Kentucky, you still have Tennessee, uh, you still have um, Florida to a lesser extent on the schedule. So those going to be spots on the schedule. If Georgia plays like they are right now, they're going to lose. So number three, Georgia, um, I moved you guys down two spots. I did. So, But I still think you're a top three team. I still think you're in the big three. Number two, Ohio State. You beat Rutgers 49 to 10. Uh, Ryan Day pisses me off. I'm just going to come out and say it. Um, he pisses me off. It seems like he always is complaining like last week against Wisconsin, which, by the way, the reason why Alabama's one and Ohio State is two is because I, and I'll get kind of, because I think it's clearly Alabama's one or Ohio State's one so far this season. Um, 
the reason why is because I think Alabama's resume is better. Arkansas is a borderline top 25 team. They were in the AP top 25. Um, not my top 25. The only top 25 that matters is my top 25. But the AP top 25 that uh, Alabama went into uh, Arkansas and beat them 49-26. They beat Texas, which is a top 25 team. Um, Alabama's resume to me is just better than Ohio State's. I mean, Ohio State's one, two wins are a new game and, and – uh, Wisconsin, Notre Dame has two losses already. Ohio, and Wisconsin, uh, Wisconsin's going to have a long season, in my opinion. I mean, you let Illinois go into your own building and beat you 34-10 to 10 like that. Um, yeah, so I, I just like Bama's resume better. But Brian Day annoys the shit out of me because he's, like, yelling. He's he's trying to fight the Rutgers head coach up 49-10. It's like, what are you doing fighting Greg Schiano up 49-10? What are you doing yelling, playing to the refs up 28 nothing to Wisconsin? He just annoys me, Ryan Day. So I just want to throw that out there. And that has nothing to do with these rankings. It's not a bias or anything. I really think Bama's resume is better. And that's why I moved Bama up two spots to number one and Ohio State State at two. But um, Ohio State... Um, they do have, they still have Michigan, Penn State, Maryland um, on their schedule. So we'll see what happens there. They still have Iowa on their schedule as well. Um, Alabama, as I said, t- they still have a lot. The SEC West Gauntlet, A and M next week. I think they'll beat them pretty convincingly. Uh, they still have Mississippi State, Ole Miss, LSU. Um, so yeah, at Tennessee, Alabama is gonna have some tests of. Uh, down the road, so number one Alabama. So that's the top twenty-five. Now the teams I dropped out and the teams I considered. Uh, teams I dropped out: number seventeen Oklahoma. What was that against TCU? Um, I thought that Brett Venables would, ha- would fix this team, um, and at least not have them get embarrassed like that, or and go into TCU and actually get the victory in convincing fashion. Uh, man, was I wrong. Uh. I, listen, and I still think Oklahoma is a top 30 team at worst, but that was bad. 55-24 was the final final against uh, TCU. That was bad. That was really bad. Um, so I dropped them out. Number 18, Washington. Washington lost to UCLA 40-32. I get it was a one-possession loss. It was 40-16 hanging into the fourth quarter. Um, and also Washington. Um, Michigan State's resume is not helping Washington right now. That's kind of one claim to. Oh, uh, that's kind of one claim right there. The one victory claim right there. Um, it's the resume is not help. Michigan State does not look like a good team at all. Um, so as I said, it's not. I'm Washington's win against Michigan State's not helping them. So I dropped them out. Number twenty, Texas A and M. Um, that was an embarrassing loss on the road to Mississippi State. Uh, Missis- you guys are clearly better, better talented than Mississippi State, and you guys got ran off the field basically. So I, goodbye, you dropped out. And then Pitt. Um, I did not even watch the highlights of the Pitt Georgia Tech game. I just looked at the box score and dropped Pitt out because for Pitt to lose to Georgia Tech, a team that fired their coach and has first game for an interim head coach to lose like that is beyond un- unacceptable. So goodbye, Pitt. Um, and to a matter of fact, Pitt's not even making like, my top 35. Like if Pitt was like number five in the country and did that, I might have dropped them out of the top 25. So t- Pitt was number 24, absolutely dropped them out. Teams I considered. If this was a top 26, my Maryland Terps would be number 26. If you look at Maryland's resume, uh, they basically beat all of their opponents by at least two possessions and went ahead and only um, lost to – the only loss is a seven-point loss on the road to the number four team in the country. I think Maryland is a nine is an eight-nine win team at worst. I think Maryland, outside maybe Ohio State, could beat anybody on that schedule – and they have a big game against Purdue this week. If they could beat Purdue, watch out. So, Maryland would be number 26. Number 27 would have been Coastal Carolina. As I said, I I debate between JMU and Coastal Carolina. I just think JMU's wins are better. Coastal Carolina has some decent wins as well. But I just like JMU's wins a little bit better. So, that's why JMU's in the pool and Coastal Carolina isn't. But Coastal Carolina is 5-0. So, please keep an eye on them. Uh, Kansas State. They beat Texas Tech. Uh, 
back and forth game. They pulled away a little bit from Texas Tech. Texas Tech's not a bad team, but um, Kansas State, they still have Kansas. They still have Texas. They still have Oklahoma State. So it's, they still have some games. Baylor, I believe, is still on that schedule as well. So Kansas State, um, it's a wide open Big 12 with, I think, a lot of good teams. So we'll see what happens there. Mississippi State. Let's show Mississippi State some love. Um, the four and one. The only losses to LSU, who's also four and one, and at worst is a top thirty-five team. Um, listen, you look at Mississippi State. They blew out Texas A and M. Uh, they blew out Memphis, who's four and one. Um, they're winning games. Um, that and some people were high on them coming into the season. I wasn't really buying into it, but I see what they were at least talking about. What they were talking about now. So, um. Mississippi State, uh, big win. They st- but they still have Bama. They still have Ole Miss. So they still have to go through that gauntlet. So, um, but I do think they are a top thirty team. And then um, Liberty, Illinois, and I meant to put LSU in there as well. Kind of the teams I considered as well. LSU four and one. Your only loss is to the number twenty five team in this poll. So and by one point. You beat Mississippi State. Uh, you have a big game against Tennessee this upcoming week. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Is at home. Liberty four and one. Your only loss is to the number seventeen uh, team in this pool. Or excuse me, the, the number sixteen team in this pool in Wake Forest by one point. Uh, you get, besides that, you beat everybody else in your schedule. Keep an eye on Liberty. Illinois. Let's give a shout out to Illinois and Coach Brett Bierma. Outside of an ugly loss, and let me tell you something, if they did not lose to Indiana, they would be in this top 25. Um, outside of an ugly loss to Indiana where they just gave opportunity after opportunity to Indiana to win that game and finally Indiana took it, um, Illinois has been pretty good. They beat, uh, they went ahead, they beat Virginia in convincing fashion, they beat Wyoming, they, beat, they went on the road and beat Wisconsin in convincing fashion. 34-10 to 10 was the final. Very convincing win there. Um, big time win for Illinois, in my opinion. They they could be the team in the Big Ten West. They that Illinois Minnesota game, I think, is going to be a big game. That Illinois Purdue game, I think, is going to be a big game as well. So keep an eye on Illinois. But yeah, that's the top twenty-five. Comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. I always like hearing from you all. Thanks for watching the video. Hit the thumbs up, please. Scratch your champ. Greatly appreciate if you do that. McDevitt B signing off.